Good evening and welcome to um, our Covenant's time of uh, evening prayer on Friday, November 27th, the weekend of Thanksgiving. If we're all full and have had plenty of pie, um, in my opinion, leftovers are the best thing about Thanksgiving. So we welcome you into this space and we will be reflecting on scripture from 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 6 to 15 and we'll center ourselves with the hymn come ye thankful people come Let us pray. God of bounty and blessing, we gather this evening in gratitude for all that we have been given. We are grateful for the blessings and for the opportunities to be of service to others in your holy name. Bless each of us gathered here in this virtual space that we may become blessings to others. Amen. Amen. Tonight's um, scripture comes from the letter, second letter, um, to the Corinthians, chapter 9, verses 6 through 15. Remember this. A farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop. Hmm. But the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. And God will generously, generously provide all you need. Mm -hmm. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. As the scriptures say, they share freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, God will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. Yes, you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. And when we take our, your gifts to those who need them, they will thank God. So two good things will result from this ministry of giving. The needs of the believers in Jerusalem will be met and they will joyfully express their thanks to God. As a result of your ministry, they will give glory to God. Mm. For your generosity to them and to all believers will prove that you are obedient to the good news of Christ. And they will pray for you with deep affection because of the overflowing grace of God given to you. Thank God for this gift too wonderful for words. Ooh. Thanks be to God for oh, that man. reading. I know. It's the, I'm, I'm picturing um, Paul in this setting and small house churches because one of the reasons he was in Corinth was um, he was fundraising for mm -hmm. the people in Jerusalem who were suffering greatly. And this is a text we often hear on Stewardship Sunday, <laughs> on those kinds. But 
in the context of Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. it, again, from Wednesday, this really puts things in perspective. And it's a very personal, <clears throat> it's like a, a sermon slash prayer of Paul's to the people in Corinth on behalf of those in need in Jerusalem. This giving and receiving cycle mm -hmm. is, it's just an eloquent way. Yeah. Uh, there's this a saying, I don't know who says it, I don't, it just, I hear it a lot, is that the more you give away, the more you get. And it's a kind of a crude way of saying that, that in order to give something you, or get something, you give something away. But it's a theological phenomenon that I have never known that to fail. That the more you give away, the more you receive. Not necessarily the same thing. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and, and it's not the kind of thing that, where you can say, ooh, I think I want to receive a bunch of stuff, so I'm going to give. It doesn't work that way. It's, it's, it is born out of who you are as a Jesus follower and your faith in God that the blessings first come from God. And when you, once you embrace this uh, theology of generosity, that just propels the giving and receiving cycle. And like I said, I've, I have never known it to fail in my own life mm. and in the life of the church. Mm. And so what I've learned and relearned and relearned mm. is possessing a grateful heart mm. changes your life. Mm -hmm. It changes everything about your perspective and your outlook. Uh, who, Marvin, who said the other day that um, Christians are inherently optimists, and that comes from being very having that generous heart. Yeah. That gratitude is a spiritual gift, mm. and sharing is a spiritual practice. Mm. So those are mm -hmm. this, this total embrace of um, engagement in the giving and receiving cycle. And like Psalm 65 from Wednesday, this text um, puts thanks and giving into perspective. Mm -hmm. God is the source of all giving. Giving thanks is a good and proper response. This idea of... Um, yes, please, and no thank you. Those are polite responses, and they should be built into our um, everyday vocabulary. But what Paul, the Apostle Paul is saying about this, um, this polite response is that a grateful and generous heart is, is more than being polite. Mm. It's a window to the holy. It's mm. a window to God. Mm -hmm. And I remember um, one of John McNeil's sermons years ago was about the giving and receiving, receiving cycle. cycle. Yeah, that stayed and with I, me a long time. I, it really did. It stuck with me all these years. And, and I've used the phrase often because it's just a very tangible visual about it's, it's a synergy that operates off yeah, of itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because giving, um, it, it should never be a one-way street. Um, if it is, then it's more patronizing than generous. Mm. And the same way with re receiving, if, if it's not a, a two-way street, then, then we all of a sudden become selfish. Mm. And so it's got to be this, this cycle and exchange. Mm. Uh, in part of the reading today, Paul quotes um, scripture, he calls it, and it's from Psalm 112. And that psalm is called Blessings of the Righteous. And it says they, uh, but it's the righteous, have distributed freely. They have given to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Mm. And so it is, again, this idea of possessing this right frame of mind, possessing this, um, this deep down knowledge that, that all sorts of those blessings come from God. Mm. And so giving generously and being thankful, they're, they're, they're united. They're two things, but they're one. And they are gifts that have their roots in God's generosity, abundance, 
for us, yeah. what, how we are, well, rely on that, that providence. And so we see over and over even in Jesus' ministry and um, how generosity and thankfulness, it's, it's deeply, deeply embedded in the good news message. As a matter of fact, I'm not sure you could have the good news message without generosity and thankfulness. Mm -hmm. And so what do we have to be thankful for in 2020? And, um, you know, it can be... It could be a challenge this year to come up with those things. And as we said toward the end of our reflection on Wednesday, there's a lot of people for whom this time of year is just a, a real struggle. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so that's another reason to, for of us um, to engage in that giving and receiving cycle. And so it's in this spirit of generosity and thankfulness um, in our hearts and at the very tip of our tongues mm. Uh, to just discover in so many rich and wonderful ways what it is that we have to be thankful for. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Sister Marlene uh, at the um, Ecumenical Thanksgiving service talked about it. Um, um, Gratitude as a disposition of the heart. Yes. And she talked about it, um, thanksgiving and gratitude being a whole body experience. And when you said that about the heart and then the tip of the tongue yeah. it's, and the mind, yeah. it's all connected. It's yeah. all. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't think you can fake uh, generosity and thankfulness. I mean, if, yeah. when it's genuine, it's rich mm -hmm. and powerful. Mm -hmm. Indeed, yeah. Our prayer hymn today, tonight, is um, God of the Sparrow. Mm -hmm. God of the Sparrow, God of the Whale, God of the Swirling Stars. Mm -hmm. How do we say awe? Mm -hmm. How do we say praise? We continue to remember all of those um, we've already had in our prayers this week, um, especially DeWitt and Deb and Dave. But um, everyone that we have named and you have named in the silence of your hearts, let us pray. God, we praise you for sparrows mm. and all seemingly little and unimportant things. We praise you for whales mm. and all large and amazing things. We praise you for stars and all distant and unimaginable things. Help us notice and appreciate them all from grateful hearts. God of the rainbow, God of the cross, God of the empty grave, how do we say grace? How do we say thanks? Thank you for the gifts of beauty and promise like rainbows that appear unexpectedly in the midst of the storms of life. Thank you for your presence in suffering. Thank you for your promise of new life. We pray for all who need a moment of beauty, who need healing in your presence, and hope in your promise. God of the hungry, God of the sick, God of the prodigal, how do we say care? 
How do we say love? While many of us have full bellies and plenty of resources and good health, many of your children do not. We pray that you could give us more than words to speak your care. Give us the willingness to develop your deep, deep love and gratitude within our hearts so that our hands and our feet may join our mouths Mm -hmm. in tending your people and your earth. All this we pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Sunday. Um, Mark. Mark. Chapter 13. Mm -hmm. 24 to 37. 37. Um, and it'll surprise you. Um, it's um, our first Advent reading. Mm-hmm. Um, it, Sunday is the first Sunday of Advent when we look at the hope of Jesus coming in the birth. We've just finished Christ the King when we talk about Jesus coming again. And, um, and this Matthew text is a little bit of a continuation of that same um, when will it be right right thing Um, Mark is I love Mark I mean it's like what is the dragnet saying (laughs) just the facts man just the facts just the facts just the facts not a lot of fill in the blank with you know well and that's the joy of the good news is that we get to fill in the blank yes yes Um, in whatever God is calling us to so tune in on Sunday um, for Mark 13, 24 to 37. Right. Uh, in case you, our um, Wednesday announcement, uh, Rochester is in the orange zone for infection rate, and so we have suspended in-person worship and indefinitely. Um, I have a feeling it'll probably be after the first of the year before we start back up again, waiting for the... Uh, results of gathering on uh, people who gather for Christmas and New Year's that maybe should be staying home. But uh, we wanted to model the, you know, this stay at home and no <laughs> gathering. So it's um, a little heartbreaking, but at the same time, we want to do everything we can to end this pandemic as soon as we possibly can. So that will be indefinite. But we will be online and remaining yep. that. Don't get rid of us that easily. No, that's right. And <laughs> we'll maintain that spiritual connection that is really the foundation of how we're going to get through this anyway. We're going to look back at this years from now and said, you know what? It was all that prayer and reflection and worship that we did online that really held us together. Because mm-hmm. I believe that will be true. Our closing postlude is uh, For the Beauty of the Earth, and I, I'm, I'm sorry that we're not singing it because the lyrics are so thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. And so let us pray with a blessing for the beauty of this earth, for the many ways that um, you have blessed us, God. We are grateful. And so help us to cultivate that spirit of gratitude and thankfulness as we go forth um, into this Advent and holiday season and through the rest of our lives, that our lives may be changed because we have a change of heart. Mm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Happy Thanksgiving. Have a good evening, and we'll see you Sunday. Good night.